Hey everybody, today I'm talking about Calico, which is a one to four player board game. It takes about 45 minutes to play. Um, it's a puzzly style tile placement game. Um, as you can see, it has a very kind of cutesy theme to it, where you are making a quilt in order to attract cats to your quilt um, by forming different kind of patterns of different colors and, um, and yeah, different patterns. So. Um, the, the game is very simple mechanically. Um, you're always gonna have two tiles in your hand and you're gonna play one of those tiles onto your unique player board or your own little tableau um, in order to try and hit all these different scoring criteria which are gonna be pulling you in all different directions. Um, at the start of the game, you're gonna have um, a few of these different hex tiles and you're gonna put them on your board in kind of preset locations. And they're going to dictate certain things, such as saying, um, you know, I want this hack hex to be surrounded by four types of a certain pattern and two types of another pattern. Some might say I want three of a, of a certain kind and three of a certain kind. Kind. One might say have, um, you know, four of one or kind of three of one, two of another, one of another, and and one of another. So there's there's kind of all different things that are going to be you're trying to achieve throughout the game and um, lining them up and kind of making certain tile score for a number of different criteria is kind of the aim of the um, aim of the game and how you're going to do well while playing this game. But not, not only are you trying to um, adhere to those restrictions on your own player board, you've got these cats that also score in their own ways. So one might say, um, you know, this cat might want um, five of a certain pattern in a row. Some might want six in like a, just touching one another. One might want um, um, maybe like a little triangle of shapes. Um, and you're going to score points depending on how difficult it is to achieve those different objectives. Um, but also you're going to be trying to line up specific colors because you're going to get a few bonus points that way by scoring these different buttons. Um, so yeah, as you can probably tell, there's a lot of different things you're trying to achieve and there's a, a huge pool of points that you're going to be able to, or you're going to be trying to go for, but achieving them all is going to be very, very difficult. And also with that initial kind of um, hexes that I mentioned on your player board, not only are you trying to, um, you know, do those objectives with the patterns, you can also get bonus points by doing them with the colors as well. So even more, more restrictions. So um, as I said, mechanically, very simple. You're gonna have two tiles at all times. You're gonna be placing one of them. Then you're gonna be drawing um, a tile back into your hand from the center of the board. I think there's always gonna be four available. Um, it might even be three, um, I, I forget. Um, and then you're gonna be replacing them with one on the um, from, from the kind of draw bag. Um, and that's gonna be it. So the restrictions are quite tight. You know, you're not gonna have um, you know, loads and loads of options to do on your turn. Um, you know, the pool you're drafting from is pretty limited. So it's all about working with what you have, which I think is a great touch in comparison to how many restrictions there are in the game. Obviously, that you're, you're going to be racking your brain trying to place each tile as efficiently as you can in order to achieve as many objectives as you can with each tile placement. And so, and obviously, obviously you're not going to always going to be able to achieve that. And some, uh, as, as the game goes on and your board is becoming tighter and tighter and tighter, um, the restrictions are going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. And um, the tiles you're going to place is inevitably going to ruin one of your patterns or going to, um, yeah, just, just, throw a spanner in the works and you're not going to be able to achieve what you wanted to achieve. But as I said, it's, it's all about kind of weighing up what you want to score and having to, or knowing when to sacrifice things, um, you know, when, when you have to. So, but yeah, it's, it's very simple. Um, as I said, just, just placing those tiles, trying to form as many patterns as you can in order to score as many points as you can at the end of the game. Um, the, I love the fact that the player boards also have um, some kind of pre, or the border of the player boards, because it is a recessed board has tiles already um, printed onto them. So it's like you're almost like sewing a hole into the middle of the quilt and you also have those, um, you know, those patterns already on the um, on the border. So it's something more to work with. Um, it gives you a bit more opportunity, but at the same time gives you more restrictions. So that's a, that's a really nice touch. Um, the meaningful decisions of the game are, are always solid in games like this. I think, you know, always playing as efficiently as you can, keeping your options as open as you can. Um, I said, knowing when to sacrifice things at the right time, um, you know, when to bite the bullet and give up on a certain pattern. Because if you if you go too far down a rabbit hole and try to spin too many plates at once, um, I think that's ultimately gonna shoot you in the foot. Whereas if you really focus on getting those big points um, and just focusing on a few objectives, but in a, in a strong manner, then I think you can do quite well out of this one. And obviously there's lots of different approaches you can take, you know, focusing on the cats, trying to focus on your, on your player board, trying to focus on the buttons, um, you know, so there's this, I said, a lot of plates to be spun. Um, the, the tension of people taking the central tiles is always going to be there. Um, 
obviously with more or the higher player counts, um, the more kind of chaos is going to come into it and kind of relying on certain tiles still being there when it's your turn is going to be, um, is not going to be as common. Um, balance of the game, everybody's playing for, or kind of singing from the same hymn sheet. You know, there's no, um, no players that are going to get an advantage out of where they're sat or anything like that. So a very balanced game. Um, obviously, you're somewhat dependent on the, or you're very dependent on the, the tiles available in the centre center of the table, which is, in, you know, inevitably going to favour some players at certain times. They're, they're going to be wanting tiles that you simply don't want. Um, but again, that's part and parcel with games like this. Mechanically, very smooth, very simple. Um, turns ultra quick. Um, whilst being, still being very brain burnery. Um, there is scope for analysis paralysis with this one. Um, however, as I mentioned, I love the fact that you've only ever got two tiles in the, in the game. I think if, if you added more than that, um, it's going to just make the game worse for it. Um, you know, some people might, might argue that, you know, with a game of this much or this many scoring parameters, you want more scope to have more tiles in your hand, but I just think that will really ruin things, it will slow things down, it will bog things down and just kind of grind the game to a halt. Whereas always having two tiles I think is just a perfect balance of, um, of being limited while still having to weigh up all the options you can score from. Um, time investment, really good. Um, you know, 45 minutes to play a game like this is about right for me. I think you can even get that time down, maybe playing with two players. Um, you fill up your whole sheet, which is very satisfying. You know, you're not going to have holes in your sheet or anything like that. You're going you're to keep playing until the, in every hex is full. Um, so again, very satisfying. Um, so yeah, I do like that. Um, yeah, uptime good. Replayability, um, there's a lot of different cats you can score from. You can go, f you can add those different hexes on your player board um, to go for different things. Um, so yeah, there's different things to try out. and. I think ultimately with games like this, the kind of puzzle style games, um, replay replayability is generally good anyway because it's always going to be a tactical puzzle and um, always going to be engaged because there's not really much scope to lose interest because you're always going to be um, you know, racking your brains about what you're going to do next. Um, interaction wise, um, ultimately it's going to be that common draft pool, um, you know, people taking cards that, or tiles that you want, um, usually without knowing about it and um, you know, just inevitably um, or obliviously taking tiles that are going to completely scupper your um, your plans, but um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the limit limitation of the um, of the player interaction. Um, aesthetically, um, I love the way the game looks. It's extremely bright, um, really nice quality components. Um, very distinct, great for color blindness as well. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm severely color blind, and um, every tile has a certain logo on as well. To, um, to compensate for that, so um, you know, color blindness isn't going to be an issue. Very, as I said, very vibrant. It comes together extremely well. Everything fits together great. Um, the cats look really good, um, and yeah, I, no component, no no component issues whatsoever. In fact, they're all very, very good. Um, and the theme wise as well is very approachable, very open to people um, to be, or very inviting, I should say. Um, people love cats. Um, I particularly don't, but. Um, doesn't put me off whatsoever. It's just it's just that kind of visual spatial puzzle, um, which is really cool. Um, progression of the game I do like I do like quite a lot because as the game develops, as I said, you you're inevitably going to be um, uh, you know the restrictions get tighter and tighter and tighter, and you're going to want more specific criteria to to fit what you want, and um, you know you're going to have to know when to um, when to miss out on that. So again, I love the way that the, the game closes in on you and um, gets gets more restrictive as the game goes on. Um, scalability wise, great. I mean, no issues at all. It works perfectly well at um, the two, three, and four player counts. I've not played the solo mode, and I don't know what that entails. So I'll be honest about that. And um, comparison wise, um, as I said, there's a lot of these style games out there. Um, you know, you've got your, your kind of te or t you know, Tetromino style games, um, you know, obviously loads of tile placement games where you're trying to make patterns and stuff. Um, I think if anything reminds me of this game, uh, it's probably going to be um, something like Sagrada, which is um, you know, the stained glass window dice drafting game, um, simply because of the different criteria you're going to go for, the scoring opportunities, while adhering to the restrictions. Um, and that's, that's why it kind of reminds me of that one. But this one has um, a bit more going on in it, I think. Um, you know, a bit, a bit more scoring opportunities. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately there is again, a lot of games out there like this, but this one is a really good one. Um, I, I really didn't have any issues with it at all. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I like the, 
the way everything works to be honest, just a very pleasant experience while still being um, tense, still being um, you know frustrating at times, but still being satisfying at times. Um, I said you got a you, you can't do everything at once. You know, you're going to you know, you're obviously going to start the game thinking you can do everything, um, but it's going to you're going to fall flat on your face. But that's part of the fun of it. Um, really enjoyed it. Yeah, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, you know, not not my normal style game I'd, I'd go for. Um, you know, I generally like my Euro style games, but these puzzly style games um, are always enjoyable for, enjoyable for me. And as I said, this one is a very strong one, and I can see it being a big hit. Not only because of the solid gameplay, but because of the um, really charming package it's in. You know, lovely artwork, lovely components, um, and just a very um, nice feel to it. So that's Calico. Um, it gets my um, my shield of quality. I'm very happy to give it that. Um, it's um, it, it's a lovely game, and I'm definitely um, going to be a hit of the year. I think so um, I hope you've enjoyed this review if you have please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too for everyone else I'll see you next time I'm chairman of the board bye